Okay. I have in front of me the Spanish Modelo 93. This was the rifle that made the Americans get rid of the 3040 Krag because it is so far superior to anything we had. Now, the Battle of Kettle Hill or San Juan Hill, if you want to consider that an American victory, then Bunker Hill is a British victory. You had 750 Spanish soldiers being attacked by 6,400 American soldiers, of which 20% became casualties. And when they studied why that happened, the answer was the Spanish Mauser. Okay, this rifle had so many advantages. Number one, it had an enclosed magazine of five rounds that went in there that were protected by the stock and did not protrude. It was a double stack. The bolt itself was squared off at the bottom. They thought that improved uh, the feeding. They found out later it was really irrelevant. But what's important is it had an ex a non-rotating extractor. So when it went in, it snapped on a round in one place and yanked that round out. If you have a rotating extractor, it would snap on the cartridge and sort of work its way around back and forth every time you work the bolt. The big advantage of this gun was the stripper clip. You carried five rounds in a nice little package, you lined them up with the notch, used your thumb, forced them in, took that out, and you were ready to shoot. An American had to pull out individual rounds, stick them in that little loading gate on a crag, and they said that the, the foot of San Juan and Kettle Hill was littered with 30, 40 cartridges. As guys fumbled them, dropped, pulled them out of their belt, dropped them, whatever. The Spanish, a packet of five rounds, boom, right into the gun, ready to go. The cartridge itself was superior to the 3040 Krag. The 7 millimeter was a high velocity to the point that the Americans used to refer to it as the Spanish Hornet. And there were cases where an American soldier was shot, the bullet went right through him and got the guy behind him. Okay? So they had the Spanish Hornet. It was accurate at long range. It was smokeless, low recoil, and with the stripper clip, fast to reload. So this particular model was made in Berlin by the Lowe Company, L-O-W-E, I think it is. We can make it out there. It's... Let's see if I can let me flip it around, make it easier for you. But it was made in Berlin, all right, in 1896. Now, when the war was over, the United States had Spanish soldiers surrender their weapons. 10,000 of these guns were then taken to Springfield Armory where they were evaluated and stored. And once we had the 1903 Springfield, these were sold to Bannermans. And Bannerman would give you a piece of paper saying, this is one of the guns we captured from the Spanish. Rather than saying, these are one of the guns the Spanish surrendered to us when the war was over. Is this one of those guns? High probability. Can I prove it? No. I don't have a provenance letter from Bannerman. When Bannerman sold these guns, he gave you a letter saying these are the ones we got from the U.S. government. Um, Springfield Army didn't seem to keep the serial numbers of these guns. But if you're a collector, you want a Spanish Mauser made before 1899. That is important. Before 1899. Did we swipe this off the bar? Yes. <laughs> okay. So, that's what you want as a collector. Now, the bayonet for it, 12 inch blade, and you can see the markings, okay? Now it says 1898. Some people tell me that's the year of manufacture, other people tell me that was just the year the arsenal was opened. So I can't tell one or the other. But they're marked 1898, so it goes great with this particular rifle. All right, below I have the Spanish carbine model 1893. This one here was made in Oviedo. I don't know if you can see the markings on there, try to get them. This was made in Spain. The Spanish were making them under license. They were making copies of the Spanish Modelo, here the Spanish model. Now the importance of these guns is the 93 Mauser and its later variant, the 95, were used by the Boers. And they too were out shooting the British with their seven millimeter flat trajectory, high velocity, high penetrating rounds. So both the United States and Britain had to reconsider what's gonna be their service rifle. Because in each case, they ran into the 93 Mauser. Now it's got the squared off bolt bottom, okay? 
both these guns cock on closing, which you know Americans tend to not like. Let's see, let me get them. All right, both were made that when you ran out, it would stop warning you that you're out of ammunition. Put the stripper clip in, then they would feed, and you notice it cocks on closing. It also had a three position safety, okay? This is now in the fire position. This permits you to work the bolt, but the gun will not fire. This is the safety, you can't work the bolt, okay? So the wing safety, which you're familiar with, with the O3 Springfield, which was one of the things we copied off the Mauser. And again, the Mauser, two locking lugs. I should have pulled that out and showed you. It's got two locking lugs. The Krag only had one, so when they tried to improve the Krag ammunition, bolts would crack. They couldn't handle the pressure. This, close on cocking, three position safety, okay? Safe, you can't fire it. Safe, you can't fire it, but you can manipulate the bolt. And then the fire position. Over here I have a sword. It is a brass handled steel sword that was given to me and no one knows the history of it. I don't either. But if you look at the markings, it's also marked 1898 Toledo or Toledo if you want from Ohio. But again, these are probably Spanish American War items. Is this a Spanish American War one? Yeah, it's an Oviedo. I think yeah, this is Oviedo. This is the Spanish arsenal. That's where that question? was made. Oh, the whole gun was made in Spain. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. This I used to buy when I was a kid. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. This one says they were very popular. They came out every every month, and you went down to the store and you paid your one or two. Much better off than the blue one. But the first service uniforms that these men received were these khaki, or they call them khaki, you want to be the these cotton drill uniforms such as this. And this is the first pattern. This is, this is now the beginning of the United States Army starting to transitionalize into something a little bit more modern. 